So I just played a series of unfortunate events, the movie, the game, and holy sh**, this is actually decent. Like, it's a licensed tie-in game from the Windows XP era, published by Activision, developed by a studio I've never heard of, and based on one of the worst book-to-movie adaptations since Aragon. And it works! Not to the point of being Game of the Year or anything, but when the bar is set so low, you can really only go up from there, and this is more than average output. Developer No Wonder manages to achieve something that the film it's based upon somehow just couldn't manage. Which here means have actual enthusiasm for the source material. It takes more liberties than the movie, but given the different context and the way it's handled, it feels far more genuine. You've got Lemony Snicket's narration, there's additional levels included that expand upon things they're only nodded at in the books, and all the sequences in between nail what can only be described as a hybrid of the Harry Potter games, Alice, Madness Returns, Ratchet and Clank, and a 90s adventure game. As if that strange hybrid design weren't enough, it presents some of the best, bleakest comical scenarios for you to be stuck in, working within Snicket's absurd, pessimistic humor to its benefit. Ratchet it up to the scale of a Monty Python animated short. Things that would raise an eyebrow in other games, like plants spontaneously coming back to life after being watered, whole sections of a house collapsing into an abyss, or fighting off a bad case of angry crabs with rotten eggs are perfectly in line with the tone here. Combat encounters are rarely with numerous opponents, instead opting for a handful or one-on-one -on -one, a la Nightmare Creatures 2 because yeah, this game design hasn't gotten weird enough. It gets better though. Tim Curry is the narrator. Tim mother Curry narrates your adventure and has a ball with it. For Sunny to nibble on and it would give me great pleasure to inform you that the children went on to live happy lives under the care of their beloved uncle in this cozy and inviting home. Unfortunately, I cannot. This lovely home belongs to Justice Strauss, Count Olaf's friendly next door neighbor. This is the house of Count Olaf, and this is where it pains me to continue our story. And he's not the only named actor in here either. Emily Browning, Liam Alkin, and even Jim Carrey reprise their roles. I mean, none of them sound even slightly comfortable with this, to the point that I thought Carrey was replaced with a sound-alike, but no, it seems constantly going between his normal voice and trying to sound like Kent Olaf is what he was going for. We dining here this evening, and you will have dinner ready precisely when we feel like eating it. Money, money, money. Tons of new fancy clothes for me. None of us know how to cook. We'll need a recipe. Okay. And weirdly, the mixture of Curry's delightful dry cynicism against the static actors around him makes sense in a series of unfortunate events game. Even the ridiculously cheesy, wax figure character models on display only serve to further sell this dreary, dismal tone that the books are famous for. Look at Count Olaf. It looks like his eyebrows are flying off of his damn head, and somehow, this isn't repulsive to look at. It's hilarious. It's morbid and draws you in. This is all accompanied with sound design that's just as B-movie slapstick, but set to background music that genuinely works. Most remarkable out of all of this is how intuitive it is to play. No question, it's leaning towards absurdly easy so that pretty much any kid could get through it, these puzzles won't challenge anyone over the age of 5, but the controls themselves are nicely done. The game adopts a point and click interface despite playing like a 90s shooter, automatically swapping you to whatever gadget or weapon you need based on context. If you so desire, it has manual input for swapping ammunition types, and yes, this game somehow has multiple ammo types too, on top of everything else. But in general, it's strangely in tune with what you want. And did I mention that I installed the PC version without so much as a hitch? It even withstood alt tapping. This game was built back when people still used Windows 95 as an operating system as much as they did Windows XP, and it runs fine on Windows 7. Somehow, this cheap looking licensed tie-in game for a terrible movie is a really enjoyable hybrid action platforming puzzle shooter. Now, I haven't finished it, but there's a problem you see that caused that. How would you say, um, I kind of got loaded into the skybox and the game saved over my file, so I can't progress beyond that. 
It sucks. It really does. But to be honest, it kind of feels like the most appropriate ending for this. It's a really strange game, and apparently there's a console version with similar game design, but executed completely differently, boasting, among other things, hints of classic Resident Evil, in addition to completely different levels. They share the same assets, far as I can tell, but it's essentially a different game based around the same core principles. We're talking full force unleashed here. Regardless, it's rare to find any licensed tie-in game that's worth noting. It's even more peculiar to find one that does so many things right despite trying such a bizarre game design for a product that, from what I can tell, most didn't even touch. I was able to find this for four bucks at a random Goodwill store. Surprisingly though, critics at the time actually agreed with what I'm finding. Most of the review scores are around 7 out of 10, which is damn good for a game of this breed. So yeah, if you're willing to hazard an ass-backwards weird game, there are worse things to play? It's a better use of your time and money than Outlast 2. If I can, I'll gladly try the console version at some point, but for now, this concludes my time with the Baudelaire children. T is for trilemma, which here means a problem in which there are three possible solutions, all of them bad. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of them, please be sure to like and subscribe because that actually helps a lot. And if you didn't like it, then please feel free to give a thumbs down, but also let's try and keep things simple in the comments section, yeah? Oh, and if you really like this video and would like to help ensure I can do more of these things, then please head down to the description and follow a link to my Patreon where you get special goodies if you chip in and help make this channel a reality. I'm the Underbridge Gamer, signing off.